All right, starting lesson 4.2, reflections. Okay, so what is a reflection exactly? Now, you could read through everything here on your own, but uh, I'm just going to summarize it for you. So here we have this point, okay, P, and we have this line M. And we say a reflection in line M of this point P, this is what it does. It essentially takes it to the other side. So if we draw a perpendicular line, all right, it's going to take that point the same distance away from the line over to the other side. So same distance as the blue line, and then I end up with my P prime here. Okay, so going over example one, let's do a concrete example to really get the idea here. All right, so for example one, we have these three points here that make a triangle on the coordinate grid. And uh, we have to reflect this triangle in the line x equals 3. All right, so here's the blue triangle to start with, A, B, C. All right, I'm reflecting it in the line N. All right, so let's see what happens here. All right. Pay close attention here. So here's my point A. Now how far is it from the line? It's two units away from the line. So that means my new point for A, A prime, is going to be two units away on the other side. All right, and that leaves it at 5, 3. All right, then I have B. B is two units away from the line on the right side. So it's going to end up two units away from the line on the left side. And it's going to end up at 1, 2. And then I have C, which is one unit away from the line on the left side. So the new C, C prime, is going to end up one unit away on the right side. Okay, that's all there is to it. All right, now for part B, I'll uh, reflect in the triangle in the line M. So we have Y equals 1. All right, here's my line. All right, now where is C going to go? It's not going to go anywhere because it lies on the line. Okay, but let's see, what's going to happen with A? Now A is two units away vertically from the line, so it's going to be two units away on the other side. And we have one negative one. And how about B? B is one unit away from the line, so it's going to be one unit away on the other side. So we have 5, 0. And that's all there is to it. It's a really easy concept once you get it. All right, for example two, all right, this one's a bit more difficult because now we're not dealing with a horizontal line or a vertical line that we're reflecting an image over. Here we have the line y equals x. All right, so this line's running diagonally. You're going to have to think a little harder here. All right, but here's one thing I want you to take note of. Here I have my point G. All right. Now when I do my reflection, all right, look at where point G ends up here. So here I have G at 1, 2. Where does it end up after the reflection? Where's my G prime? It's at 2, 1. All right, how about F? Where does it end up after the reflection? It ends up at... 2, negative 1. All right, so here's one thing I want you to look at. Look at the difference between the, the pre-image, the pre-image, and the image. The pre-image and the image. Do you notice a pattern? The numbers just flip. All right, and so when you're working with a reflection in the line y equals x, you're just flipping the x and y values to get your new point. That's all there is to it. So we're going to summarize that in the following chart. So as I stated before, you're just taking your values for x and y, and you're flipping them when you're talking about the line y equals x. All right, if you're talking about the line y equals negative x, then you're flipping them and you're also applying a negative to each value. 
All right, if you're working with the x-axis, this is a little, this is actually easy to see if you're working with the grid, but if you're just applying properties, then all you're doing is applying a negative to the y value. If you're working with the y-axis and reflecting over that, then you're just applying a negative to the x value. That's all there is to it. All right, and you'll have this on your yellow sheet on the test. But remember, you're gonna have to know it for the benchmark on the final. All right, so let's do example three. All right, so here it says graph segment FG from example two and its image after reflection in the line Y equals negative X. All right, here's the line Y equals negative X. All right, so applying our properties now, what do we have to do? Well, what happens with F? Here are the coordinates for F. Well, I'm gonna flip the two coordinates, all right, which is what I did here, and I'm gonna apply a negative to each coordinate. So now the two becomes negative two, and the negative one becomes positive one. All right, and the same thing for G. I'm gonna flip the two values, and then the two's gonna become negative two, and the one's gonna become negative one. And that's all there is to it. All right. Next idea is that uh, reflection is rigid. Rigid means it doesn't change the shape of the image, all right? And the next concept is a glide reflection. A glide reflection means that you're first translating and then you're reflecting. All right, so that's what's happening in example four. And once again, translating means you're just shifting it and then reflecting means that uh, or you're moving it over to the other side of a line. All right, so here we have the vertices of our triangle and its image after the glide reflection. Okay, so they give you the property for the translation or what the translation is exactly. So I'm subtracting 12 from each coordinate here. So my A prime will be negative nine, two, and my B prime will be negative six, three, and my C prime will be negative five, one. All right, and now I'm reflecting over the X axis, so that means you do what then? Looking back at your properties, That means I'm gonna change each y value, all right, to negative. So here I have a double prime, then I have b double prime, then I have c double prime. All right, and that's where my image is after the glide reflection. Here are the coordinates. All right, so first I translate and then I reflect over this line. Done. All right, next concept. A figure in the plane has line symmetry when the figure can be mapped onto itself by a reflection and a line. This line of reflection is a line of symmetry. All right, so example five, we have a couple examples here. Pretty easy to understand. So if I draw a line like this, this vertical line, it's the same on both sides. So that means that's a line of symmetry. Here's another line of symmetry. All right, it's the same on the top as it is on the bottom. All right, then you have part B. You could draw lines all over the place. You could also go from point to point. And then for the next one, the only line of symmetry for this shape is drawing a horizontal line here and the top will be the same as the bottom. And there's nothing else you could do besides that. All right, that's it. Begin the assignment. If you have any questions, make sure to ask.